What is going on fellow game developers? My name is Muddy Wolf and today we are continuing our 2D Endless Runner tutorial. In this episode we are going to be actually setting up a spawner to spawn enemies that will kill our player. In the last one we added player movements, we can jump and crouch over bullets or enemies or obstacles, whatever we're going to be summoning in. I think we're going to do some like spikes and stuff like that. Um, so they are going to be all the obstacles we come across and yeah, let's uh, let's actually get started. So the first thing we want to do is actually create some obstacles. Now we're just going to create our first basic obstacle and this is just going to be called a spike obstacle. We're just going to reset transform for now and then inside of here we're going to create a 2D sprite triangle. You can add your own sprites here, whatever you want, but I'm going to just stick with a simple triangle which will just be our spike. Um, and we'll make this some sort of red color, that'll do for now. We can tweak all of the colors and stuff later on. Then I want to get our obstacle and actually place in, let's say, a small triangle because what we want to do is we want to align our inner triangle with this. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring this up here. And I think this is fine. This will make it so if we put this, uh, let's say, negative 4 or negative 3. Point, oh, that's the wrong one saying that. The spike at negative 4, you'll see it actually sits pretty flush with the ground. Obviously, it's slightly overlapping, but that's good. That means we won't see any textures. And this will be coming in like this, like uh, the fly as you're moving, this is coming towards you. Um, and what we want to do is we want to make sure all our obstacles, the base of them, will always sit in line with these ones, meaning we can spawn the obstacles. And let's say we wanted a spike slightly up, we could actually have it up here. So obviously it wouldn't be a spike, it'd probably be a bullet or something like that. Um, but it could be up here and that way um, the origin is what will move um, left and right and it will keep the element where we want it on the screen. So with this, what we want to do is add in a polygon collider 2D to our triangle just to give us that spike shape for our um, actual collider. We then want to go to the spike obstacle and we're going to add a rigid a rigid body 2D that's going to be set to kinematic. This is just because we don't need to move it other than inside of a script. We're also going to freeze its rotation because the spikes don't need to rotate and same with its Y because it will not be moving up and down, just left and right. We'll also set its collision detection to continuous. Finally, we want to create a new tag called obstacle and then once you've got a new tag called obstacle, come back to the spikes and apply the obstacle tag to both your elements. You can also add a layer. It's not necessarily um, required, but I like to have a layer for um, different things as well, especially obstacles. Finally, I'm just going to tweak this spike to be a bit smaller. I think currently it's a little bit too big, so I'm going to just get its size and put it something like 0 0.75, and then I'll move this down to fit something like 0 0.2. Now there you go, that's what our spike object looks like. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a prefab out of this by dragging it and dropping it down here. Now we can spawn as many of these as we like. Um, obviously we'll use a spawner for this, uh, but it's good. I also want to create one more, so I'm going to duplicate the obstacle. I'm just going to delete the previous one. I'm just going to uh, unpack it from being a prefab. So this one is no longer a prefab. Now I'm going to call this uh, the uh, row spike row obstacle and all i'm going to do is i'm going to get the spike and i'm going to duplicate it a couple of times let's actually do it like that there you go so now we actually have a row of spikes as well it's a slightly bigger and harder obstacle um, and we can spawn each one finally we're going to just get a flying obstacle as well that will hit basically a screen so let's just get a default obstacle we can remove this because now we have a cut reference um unpack this one completely and just call this the, let's say, projectile obstacle. And this will be the projectile. And what we want to do with this one is just row, put this back at minus four so it's on the ground. So our X position to, uh, say, zero, because I want it to be close to the place so we can measure up. And then let's put the projectile, the actual projectile for this, slightly higher. Let's say something like... Well, for, do something like 1 or even 0 0.5 and then let's rotate the set uh, 90 degrees so the triangle is facing forward and I kind of want this a bit smaller so 0 0.5 
let's move this up to one. There you go. So now you can either duck or jump over this obstacle, depending on what you want to do. And let's just make it look slightly different by making it a bit more of a yellowy color. And there you go. If we look in game, that's what it'll look like when it comes at you. And there you go. Now this will also just move like this. So all we'll do is move this left and right, and you'll see it can hit the player there. So let's just uh, drag this in there. And these are the three obstacles we're gonna start with. However, we can add as many as we want with the system we're gonna create. So let's just remove this from our scene. The next thing we wanna do is actually create our spawner. I'm just gonna reset its transform and give it something like a little red dot there. We then wanna move this to a bit further out, somewhere like this. Um, because this is where we're going to actually spawn each obstacle. So the triangle we set up here will always match this triangle, which means it will always be running along the ground. That means for the projectile ones, which are slightly higher, this will still be there and it will still be where we want it to be. It means we don't need to create three different points for our obstacles to spawn out. We can actually have them random at any point we want. And we don't have to keep making new spawn locations. Now on our spawner, we are actually gonna create a spawner script um, and just create an add. Now open up our spawner script in Visual Studio Code. We're just gonna remove all the base stuff we don't need. And we are gonna start off with setting up a serialized private game or sorry, yeah, game object array, which we are gonna be call calling our um, obstacle prefabs. We then need a private or sorry, a public uh, float, which we are going to call our, our obstacle spawn timer or time, which we're going to set to a default of about two, maybe, yeah, two seconds, two F. We'll then need a private flow, which is going to be called ti uh, time until sport obstacle spawn. And this will just be left at default. We then want to go into an update function and we just want to create our spawn loop script. Now in here we're going to have an, uh, a private void spawn loop which will run all our spawn code in here. So what we want to do is we just want to say our time until obstacle spawn is plus equal to time dot delta time this will slowly increment this time up until we hit um, our two second mark we can then say if time until object spawn is greater than or equal to our obstacle spawn time we can spawn an enemy or a sorry an obstacle so let's create that new void called spawn and leave it here now later on we're going to be adding an if statement to this which just checks if the game is still running and making sure the player hasn't died and if the player has died then we're just going to stop calling this function we also inside of here need to set our time until obstacle spawn back to zero once we've spawned an object otherwise it'll just keep spawning objects infinitely now in spawn this is where we get some fun first off we want to select the actual obstacle prefab so what we want to say is a game object dot obstacle to spawn and we are just going to call um, obstacle, or sorry, what did we name this? Obstacle prefabs. Oh. And then in here, we're just going to say a, a random dot range between zero and obstacle prefabs dot length. Now that will spawn a ran, that will give us a random obstacle that we can spawn each time. In, oh, we want to create a new game object called spawned obstacle. And we want to set this equal to our instantiate method, which will just create the new obstacle. We want to say um, our obstacle to spawn. So we just then want to give our transform dot position of our current spawner object. And then we want it to have a quaternion dot identity. This just means it will spawn it at the rotation the prefab is set at, which will basically give it its own rotation. So if you ever mess around with rotations, this is what it will... Um, it will spawn at. 
We can then get the rigid body 2D off the obstacle, which we are going to set to spawned obstacle dot get component rigid body 2D. We then want to set the obstacle rigid body dot velocity equal to a new vector 2, or sorry, a vector 2 dot left times and then we want some sort of speed variable here so we're just going to create a public float called obstacle speed and we'll set this zone to like 1f to start with and you can mess around with this value later now this will basically just tell it to keep going left so let's give this a try and see what happens so let's go back to our game our unity instance let's wait for the spawner script to compile then all we want to do is select each one of our prefab so what we can do is we can lock this up here so the inspector doesn't change then we can select each one of our prefabs and drop them into our prefab list. And then what we could do is just essentially hit play and see what happens. So you can see obstacles are being spawned and although they are extremely close to each other, so we're going to have to play around with the uh, speed and the times, uh, um, this, as you can see, is spawning obstacles. Now we're kind of stood on the wrong obstacle. Anyway, so you can see that. So let's make the obstacle spawn timer free and the obstacle speed also equal to free. This will make them much more distant, distanted. This will make sure they're a lot more far apart before it spawns the next obstacle. And you might want to play with these times to get something you like. So here we go. We have our first obstacle. We could just jump straight over, although we did just hit that. We could duck under this one and a duck under this one. And there you go. You can see it just keeps getting uh, spawning different objects depending on what there is. Though we die on that one. I'm not even sure if this one is possible currently. No, it looks like we die every single time. So we may need to mess around with this again. I, I actually suggest upping the speeds. That should make it so it actually spawns them um, quicker and we can jump over them quicker. So the next thing we want to do is we actually want to go back to our players, unlock the inspector so you can actually see it move. And let's add a player collision script, which will deal with all the collisions that happen with the player. On collision enter 2D, we just want to check if the other dot transform dot tag is equal to obstacle. And if it is equal to an obstacle, then we are just going to destroy our oh, our current game object. And then normally we would uh, go to our game manager and uh, set game over. But we'll bring this in later on when we set up our core game loop. So this should destroy our player. So back in here, let's just hit play. And hopefully now we should be able to uh, dodge some of them. And when we get hit, we should lose. So here we go. The first triple one, which we may die at. Hey, we made it across this time. But let's get hit by the second one. And boom, our player gets destroyed and the game is over. Now, there's a few things we're going to need to do to tidy up. But we're going to do those in a separate video. So for now, guys, this is going to be the end of this video. I hope you've enjoyed. If you have, do not forget to leave a thumbs up, smash that subscribe button and leave a comment down below. Now, if you want the source code or the assets for this game, please feel free to drop down to the link down below that on my Patreon. If you want to get the source code you have to become a beta wolf patreon that way it supports my channel and you also get access to all the source code lesson by lesson so currently lesson one and two are up as a file lesson three will be uploaded today um so when you come around here to actually go download it it will be there ready and if you have any questions or you get stuck at all during the series please feel free to hop in my discord surfer and ask for help the links are all down below and that will be it for this video i will see you in the next one peace out.